In this video, we just want to explain a little bit about how count ifs works. So if we wanted to, for example, count the number of nos in the play column here, uh, we could do that by using count ifs. So if we want to count up just the number of nos, we would type something like this, count ifs. And the first, uh, the first thing that it needs is the criteria range. In other words, where am I counting and where am I going to look up the value to know whether I should count this or not? We would grab that right from here. Then um, we place a comma and it says, okay, where can I get the value to look up? So in this case, we wanna count no's. So we click on no here. And at this point, we could just hit enter and make this work, but I wanna point out, it's a good practice for us to lock the cell range. So I'm hitting function F4 and function F4 again to make sure that those cells get locked. Now, when I hit the check mark, you'll see that it counted to five. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So it counted that correctly. And the advantage of doing it like this with the proper cell references is that now we should be able to pull this down and it will automatically adjust. It's still counting over the same range, but it will automatically adjust to count the yeses instead of the nos. So uh, that's the simplest way to, to use uh, count ifs. If we wanna take a look at a little bit more of a complicated example, we might take a look at a count ifs example where we're counting more than one uh, condition. So in this case, we wanna fill in this table and we wanna count all of the observations where windy equals true and play equals no. So in this case, if we wanna do this, we can use count ifs for this too. So uh, we say count ifs. And uh, the first part of this is going to look pretty much like what we did last time. There's really nothing uh, new here. So we're going to say that's the range that we're counting. Uh, that is the value that we want to look for. Then we're gonna have a second criterion and that is the windy criterion. So we're counting on that column. And in that case, we're looking to that value. So if I've done everything correctly, this should only count the observations where windy equals true and play equals no. And here I want to spend a little time making sure that I get my references correct, because it's going to make life a lot easier downstream if I spend some time getting this right. So we wanna lock both cell ranges because that's not gonna change regardless of our lookup. We always want it to look in that those ranges of cells. Where we have to be a little bit more thoughtful is understanding what to lock with respect to the look, like what value we're actually looking up. And in this case, what we probably want to do is we probably want to lock row 26. And so I'm gonna explain this in just a second. Uh, no matter where we pull this, we always want it to look in row 26 because if it doesn't, it's not gonna find a no or a yes. Uh, and I'll show you what that means in a second. And then for the actual, um, for the actual lookup of Windy, we probably always want that to be uh, looking in column A because that's the only place it's going to find those things. So for those, we use a mixed reference and we'll see if we got this all right. So first let's check if that count looks right. And so uh, these are all the nodes where Windy equals true. So uh, one, two and three. So it looks like it did that count correctly. 
Now let's take a look and see if we can pull this around and see if the formula works correctly all the way around, right? So um, I believe that is correct. Let's make sure that it's doing the lookups correctly. So notice the no is still correctly being referred to, but this time it's looking up false. So that's sort of handy. And then uh, let's see if we can pull the formula over. And notice now it's looking for a true and a yes. And then if we pull the formula down, right, it's looking for a yes and a false. So just by taking a little bit of time to figure out uh, how to make our references to those cells, we really just have to do the equation once, and then we can pull the formula around and save ourselves a lot of time. Uh, at the end of this, real quick, we probably just want to make sure that all of our sums add up. So we can quickly sort of do this, take a sum of each of these, make sure they look right. We can take a sum of this. And since we're using relative references, I should be able to get away with that. And then if we did everything right, the sum across the rows uh, should pretty much equal um, the total of 14. And it looks like it does. So there you have it. That's how to use countifs to do uh, not just sort of simple counting, but also um, complex counting that we need to calculate conditional probabilities.